How do car manufacturers manage to offer the buying public such choice, yet still maintain a profit? One way is to share platforms. Why spend a fortune on research and development for a new floor pan and running gear when an existing one is perfectly fine? Thus, the underpinnings of a humble Ford Fiesta could also become the new edge design vehicle that is the car and can also lend its talents to the small coupe, the Ford Puma. Do you fondly remember the Mark II Escort, the Capri, and of course, the unforgettable Cosworth? They just don't make them like they used to, now do they? Well, Ford would tell you that actually they do, and it's called the Puma. At first glance, the Puma may seem to be far too pretty to be in the same category as those motoring legends. And whatever you think about the trendily labelled New Edge styling, you've got to agree that it's striking, it's dramatic, and it does without doubt deserve, and always get, a second look. But still, it's too pretty to be taken seriously, I hear you sneer. And horror of horrors, it shares its chassis with the Ford Fiesta. True car enthusiasts everywhere will of course rest their case at this point. But hang on just a minute before you dismiss the Puma as another Vauxhall Tigra. A sporty looking bit of fluff for the girls to drive. All talk and not a lot of action. If you're serious at all about your driving, ignore the Puma at your peril because you'll be missing out on the kind of drive that will send a shiver down your spine and put a smile on your face. Ford's designers and engineers must have been having a great week when they settled down to design the Puma. This is one car that feels like it's been designed by people who love their cars and who want you to love the Puma as much as they obviously do. Everything about it has been put together with a lot of thought. The Puma's body may well look like a sculpted work of art, but Ford have actually remembered the interior as well, which is something of a rarity in the car world. OK, so the dashboard is straight out of the Ford Fiesta, but look at the nice little touches they've added to it. All this lovely shiny chrome, dials that glow green in the dark, a beautiful steel gear stick, and of course, the cute little Puma badge just to finish it all off. But all of that is simply the icing on the cake. The Puma could be as ugly as the Lada Riva and it really wouldn't matter. Because once you put the key in the ignition and turn it on, that's when you realise that this is no tarted up fiesta. The Puma is a bit like a selection box. It's packed with more treats than are really good for you. It has an all-new 1.7-litre engine, 16 valves, variable cam timing and class-leading torque. Who cares exactly what it does or how it does it? Just take my word for it, it all works together perfectly. The Fiesta's old 5-speed gearbox has undergone a radical makeover and been shortened, and it just begs to be flicked through those close-ratioed gears. The throttle needs just the lightest of touches to send that rev counter soaring and the Puma accelerating like, well, a bit like a Puma. Not to 16 8 seconds and a top speed of 130 miles per hour. Ford have paid attention to the suspension, making it tougher, not too firm, but just enough. Enough to ensure superb, precise handling and the kind of agility at corners that you'd expect from something with a much higher price tag than its £14,500. Now, if you're not drooling by now, boys, and you still have a few doubts about the Puma's pedigree, then let me tell you this. The chassis, well, it's been developed by Ford's clever engineers in the Special Vehicle Engineering Team, chaps who really like their cars. The chaps responsible for the Escort Cosworth. I rest my case. Are any of you eating your word yet? But the real beauty of the Puma is that it has all of that and more. Its power steering makes parking a breeze. The nippy responses mean it's a joy to drive around busy towns. And out on the motorway, it has all the power you need and then some. And it still feels as solid as a rock. But wait, because there's still more. The Puma may be packed with fun, but it has a sensible side too. 
It's insurance group 12. Not bad for a car in this class. And it should do around 40 to the gallon, which is quite respectable. And you know, you can almost convince yourself that it's actually a family car. As long as your kids don't grow up to be too tall. And just take a look at this, because it does without a doubt have an absolutely huge boot for a car in this class. And it even has a split folding rear seat. And because the Puma shares so much with the Fiesta, you won't be stung for huge servicing bills and specialist parts. And because the Puma is only being sold through a limited number of Ford dealers in limited numbers, that means it should hold its value rather well. So now I've told you how wonderful it all is, it's time for me to say what I don't like, to criticise and to complain, that thing that women do rather well. And this should take me oh, about five seconds, tops. I think the wheel arches are too high, it makes the car look a bit jacked up. The back window may look fantastic, but it's like peering through a letterbox. And the hinge on the fuel flap is a bit cheap, and it looks like it might snap off easily. And that's it. If only all our complaints were that short, how easy life would be. But the Puma is one of those rare cars that makes you realise that driving isn't just about getting from A to B. In the right car, driving is all about having pleasure. The Puma makes you want to get out and go for a spin in it, instead of sitting there in front of the TV. Of course, the downside to all this is that your petrol bills will definitely shoot up if you become the owner of a Puma. And that's because you'll find yourself taking the longest route home that you possibly can. We've all seen the astonishing advert for the new Ford Puma. One bright spark at the ad agency Young and Rubicum came up with recreating part of the famous chase scene from Bullet featuring Steve McQueen. A great classic film, a great new car. But making Steve McQueen look like he's driving the new Ford Puma? No, I'm not going to say, how did they do that? But why did they do that? In order to get to the creative idea, we took uh, the three themes that underlie the vehicle itself, its daring personality, its true style, and of course the exhilarating drive. And we synthesized these into a proposition or a statement that our target audience would understand. And that proposition was freedom for your untamable spirit. And it was the notion of untamable spirit, really, that led us to McQueen, because he was somewhat un untamable, he had great spirit, and he loved motor cars. And so it just seemed natural that we should somehow use him. Long shots of the Puma in San Francisco were the easy bits. You can't see who's driving, and the only hassle really is getting the streets completely clear. But every frame of the ad which had Steve McQueen in had to be carefully storyboarded and planned well in advance. The concept uh, to uh, promote the new Ford Puma and um, basically uh, utilising footage of, of Steve McQueen from the movie Bullet um, and incorporating him from like a late, late 1967 to 69 period into like contemporary San Francisco. The first time we see McQueen is when a passerby is astonished at the sleek lines of the Puma. The camera pulls back and we see McQueen's eyes, or not in this case. In the finished ad, his eyes are digitally superimposed over the mirror. Shots from the actual movie Bullet had to be carefully analysed. Some reject it. Then an actor with McQueen's build, hair and clothes sense was hired to literally stand in. Even the closing of the door, a split second shot in the final Puma commercial took hours to set up and shoot. Uh, 
the filming over, the fun part begins. On the hard disk based editing system, the stand in actor's face appears in the new set. Out of hundreds of takes, the best angles are selected to match the existing McQueen pictures from Bullet. Then, thanks to digital matching, the actor's head is removed. And McQueen's added. Every single frame is cleaned up pixel by pixel to create a seamless join. For the VT editor, it's a painstaking job. I had to scour the film uh, all the way through and started to film and work out what shots we were going to use of Steve McQueen first. Uh, so I've never watched a feature film uh, so much in my life before. We have to actually isolate him completely. So every frame of Steve, we have to draw a mat around him and then they would call it a black and white mat. And that's what we put on top of our material that we shot in San Francisco, so i.e. our car or you know, the garage scene. So when we've done that, then we have full control. So we've taken his head off and we stick it on top of the body so then we can actually isolate it and move it together. So they're like married together. Um, so that's a specific method we're doing now. And we're doing it at such a high resolution that uh, when we eventually go back to film and do a full grade to marry all the colours together to make Steve look like he is tied into the film, um, it will look perfect. Some may criticise Ford for using a dead man to promote a new car, but somehow I feel that if Steve McQueen were alive today, he'd certainly have a Puma in his garage, even if it were no good for jumping the barbed wire in concentration camps. After the break, Carfile looks at how the original Lynx concept came about and details its transformation into the Ford Puma. This is how the world first saw the Ford Puma. It was a stunning concept car called the Lynx. At the time, nobody thought that Ford would be brave enough to actually produce the car, faithful to the spirit of this astonishing concept. But how did it come about in the first place? Well, as you know, uh, part of Ford 2000, an important element of Ford 2000, is platform flexibility. Um, we thought it'd be a fun idea to ask our young designers to design the car that they would like to own and drive based on a Fiesta platform and see what the outcome would be. Following the response to the, to the brief that we sent out, which is a wide open brief, we got about, from about eight or 10 designers, 50, 50 odd sketches, which we had to choose from. Uh, about 10 of which were open top, four seat uh, uh, roadsters. And Gary seemed to fit the bill most. It, it, it epitomized the sporty character that is obtainable from a Fiesta platform. I would say it's more of a hybrid between a car that's very well equipped, uh, athletic type sports car, but with all the elegance of a sophistication that, that most everybody would want to have. I think it's a car that I would like to drive. Over the years, Ford have produced some stunning sports cars and coupes, cars like the Ford Capri. We probably all know somebody who had a Capri if you didn't actually have one yourself. My very first car was a 1.6S Ford Capri from 1979, beautiful in shiny gold. Well, Ford have moved on since then. We've had the Probe, which probably sold not quite as Ford intended. And in fact, the Probe is about to cease production. Well, Ford's latest foray into the market is into the small and medium coupe market. And it's with this, the all new Ford Puma. Now, Ford are looking for a big slice of the small and medium coupe market, around a 25% share, and that equates to around about 5,000 cars a year. This Puma is a radical design. It's based on the Fiesta. It's slightly longer than the Fiesta, but it uses the same Fiesta chassis with a slightly longer overhang at the front and rear. The lights on the back are absolutely gorgeous. Very uh, neat and in design. We've got uh, three lights either side, and it just looks stunning from the rear end. Now, if you see this car coming up in your rear view mirror at a rather fast speed, you know it's something special. Ford have come up with a very aggressive look at the front. It's something they were obviously keen to design in, and the lights and the front spoiler look quite stunning. The car as a drive is absolutely superb, and we'll show you that in a few moments' time. Uh, the target market of the car is 25 to 35 primarily, but also maybe the slightly older age. Uh, drivers as well who've perhaps moved on and might have a second car in their garage and they're looking for something a bit sporty and a bit fun to drive out at the weekends and this is what the Puma is all about. The design brief was to create a very exciting car with uh, perception of performance and very distinctive styling. The advantage we had using the computers was that we were first of all able very quickly to show models, actual models 
built on the design themes that we created on sketches and then also to share almost instantaneously the ideas with our colleagues in England by transferring the data and of course keeping in touch with engineering. It was a way of simultaneously working in a very synergetic way. The power plant in the new Puma is an all-new 1.7 litre engine which develops 125 brake horsepower and it's been developed in conjunction with Yamaha. Uh, the engines uh, start their life in Germany, they're then shipped over to Japan where Yamaha work on them and finish them off before shipping them back to Cologne which is where the Puma is made. Now the story of how Ford came up with the engine noise for the new Puma is really quite amazing. What they did was record the sounds of some of the world's most cherished cars onto digital tape and then Signal processed those sounds to come up with a composite sound which they then put before a panel of testers. Now the pipes on the Puma have been carefully crafted to create a very unique resonance to create special sounds and colours which they think will appeal to the driver. We've deliberately set the dynamics of Puma up to appeal to the real enthusiastic driver. The Fiesta platform has already been acclaimed for its ride, handling, steering compromise. In the development of that car though, we all knew that underneath it all there was a real sport chassis there. So with Puma, we've revisited every facet of the steering, tyres, suspension, everything, and tuned it so that it's turning sharper, its body control is much tauter to give a real thrill on the corners. It's a true delight. Now Ford aren't just aggressively marketing the Puma, it's really all out war in the small coupe market. Production costs have been slashed because the car is based on the Fiesta floor pan. It comes in just one body style, one trim level and with a price of just £14,550 on the road. Air conditioning will set you back just £350. Compare that, say, against the Fiat Coupe, who will charge you over £1,000 for air conditioning and put you into a higher insurance bracket. Although Puma is a sports car, a driver's car, we haven't sacrificed affordability. Initially, the purchase price will be extremely competitive, principally because we've been able to build it on a mainstream production facility here in the Neil plant but also running costs are will be extremely competitive. It's an extremely fuel efficient engine, servicing costs are also very competitive and offer no compromise from a regular production family car. We're very new in the market. We offer something extremely different. It's not just a normal saloon turned into a sporty car. Uh, it's, it has an individual personality to it. I think the styling is really breakthrough. It has an uh, incredible, just super attention to detail. The projector headlamps, the three tail lamps in the back, the uh, aluminium gear shift knob, the uh, brushed aluminium treatment in the uh, cockpit itself, the, the very wide track of the vehicle, the large tyres, the large wheels. Uh, I, I think it just all reads sporty coupe. We originally saw, saw it as the Lynx, as the, uh, at the, uh, at the Geneva show. Why was the name changed? Any special reasons? Yes, I mean the Lynx was a concept car, as you say, that we showed at Geneva. A little bit of a teaser, a, fort, a foretaste of what we were going to bring out here. Um, Lynx doesn't work as a name in the marketplace, of course, because in Germany, Lynx means left, uh, at least phonetically. Uh, and we felt that uh, Puma had all the right sort of uh, connotations for the image of the car we wanted to uh, create here, which is a very sort of capable, stylish, uh, quick and agile type of vehicle uh, with nothing superfluous, athletic. Now you seem to have put together a great package for the car. We've, we've driven it, it drives superbly on the road, the handling is good, it, it seems to ride very well. You're pleased at the overall, uh, you, you're very pleased at how it's turned out? I'm very pleased. I mean, I'm obviously very gratified by the positive reaction we've had so far, both at Geneva and of course during the uh, more recent drive exercises. Doing a car like this is a, is a lot of fun. I mean, it's a tremendous thing for the team to do because we've got a lot of enthusiasts in Ford and this is just a great car to a, 
let the team loose on uh, to really focus, not uh, on the wider market, but on a very much more narrow targeted part of the market, which is people for whom driving is not a, a piece of their social uh, behavior, it's a hobby, a, a source of real pleasure and enjoyment to their lives. If you look at the car, I think what you see first is uh, a perception of performance and a lot of fun to drive this car. You really like to jump into the car. I think Puma will change or improve Ford's image even further. I mean, we have started already with the last products to improve our image, and Puma will just put one on top of it, just proving that we are able to do this very exciting niche market product. So what's our final impression of the new Puma Coupe from Ford? Well, we've had a chance to drive it around the roads of Bavaria and overall we're very impressed. It rides well, it handles superbly, it's very responsive and there's plenty of power from Ford's new 1.7 litre engine. We tried to think of some negative points about it and to be honest we've struggled to find any. The fuel filler cap is rather fiddly and seems a little bit uh, on the cheap side and could quite easily break. Uh, also the, the little cubby box that's near the gear lever seems to be designed for, well, nothing really. It's too small to fit a drinks can in. You might get a mobile phone in there, but apart from that, maybe a few coins and things. So those are kind of the only real negative points we've come up with. So if you're in the market for a small coupe, well, there's really plenty to choose from. You've got the Tigra from Vauxhall, you've got the Fiat Coupe, and you've got the Hyundai Coupe. But make sure you go to one of the Ford specialist dealers about the new Puma Coupe and get a chance to drive it, and then you'll really enjoy it.